<laughs> Let's hear it for Keith. Woo! <laughs> Who loves any chance to get hold of a mic and I'm being pushed out of the way. So, hey! How's it going, everybody? Thanks for coming tonight. It's... Oh, yeah. Uh, it's nice to see so many familiar faces, as well as uh, quite a bit of unfamiliar faces. So, tonight my talk is going to be about the famous Schrodinger's cat paradox, and how this leads to multiple interpretations of our world, including the Copenhagen interpretation, the consciousness or God interpretation, and the multiple universe interpretation. Oh. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, before, we, before I explain the famous cat paradox, you need to understand something uh, really awesome about quantum physics, and that's the idea of superposition, which was talked a little bit about earlier. Um, so this idea says that quantum states can be an basically more than one thing at the same time. Uh, they can be multiple things at once. It's pretty awesome. It's bizarre. And it helps us explain the Schrodinger's famous cat paradox. Now, th the way this goes is basically you take a box, you put inside of it a cat, a hammer, a flask of poison, a switch, and a uranium atom. Now, this uranium atom is in the superposition state of either decayed or not decayed. It's a quantum particle. It's following the superposition, superposition principle. And the way it goes is if the atom decays, it flips the switch, which triggers the hammer to break the flask of poison, and the cat is then dead, unfortunately for the cat. Um, now, the other scenario is that the atom never decays, the switch is not flipped, the hammer does not break the poison, and the cat, thankfully, stays alive. Now, all this is going on inside the box. You can't, you can't see what's happening. So, therefore, the cat is both dead and alive at the same time, which is kind of a paradox. This does not fit our normal view of reality. Uh, how can something be dead and alive? Now, because the cat is entangled to this atom, i.e., the, the state of the atom determines the state of the cat. You could say this cat is also uh, sort of a quantum mechanical object, even though it's, it's big, like, like us, you and me, it's macroscopic. Now, uh, an, another way you could see this experiment, which is pretty cool, is imagine you separate the atom and the cat in separate boxes, but you set it up in such a way that the cat dies if the atom decays and vice versa. And you can separate these boxes across the universe even. Uh, and since these two things are entangled, uh, you can open the box in one place or the other and instantly know the state of the other, no matter how far away you are, which is pretty bizarre as well. Now, Schrodinger now, came up with this famous wave equation. Now, you don't need to understand what these fancy symbols are. I'm sure some of you do. Uh, this is the sort of thing we work with, and uh, this equation, Schrodinger actually came up with it by, he didn't derive it, he just kind of guessed until he got it right, which is pretty ridiculous, right? And, uh, but it's pretty awesome because this is one of the most famous and most successful equations in all of physics. Uh, and, and it describes these bizarre things such as superposition and entanglement. So the next obvious question, since it's a wave equation, what the hell is waving? Uh, and that leads us to our interpretations of quantum physics. Now, there's the original and probably most accepted interpretation called the Copenhagen interpretation. Now, this says that things only exist upon you, upon you measuring them. I, uh, the cat is not dead or alive until you open the box. And once you open the box and measure it, the, this wave function collapses to one state or the other, depending on the conscious observer. 
Uh, now, this is the same thing as saying, if a tree falls in the woods and no one was there to observe it, did it really fall or did it really make a sound? This is what the Copenhagen interpretation sort of leads you to think. Uh, Einstein now hated this idea. He believed in something called objective reality, which means that everything happens and everything exists no, no matter who observes it. Like, it doesn't need an observer. Everything sort of collapses on its own and you find yourself uh, observing wh whatever happened. It doesn't depend on the observer. So that's one theory that Einstein hated because he, he says God does not play dice. I'm sure many of you have heard that one. Another interpretation called the consciousness or maybe God interpretation is, it, it goes something like this. So since everything is, uh, is obeys this wave equation, that means not only the atom and the cat is a wave, the observer who measures the cat is also a wave. So something or someone has to measure him to see if he actually measured or if he actually opened the box, right? Uh, and then who's to say he measured it? Well, someone has to measure him and his friend has to measure him, but there's not an infinite number of friends in the universe to be measured, right? Somewhere it has to end and this ultimately leads you to asking the question, does some sort of higher consciousness, or you could call it God if you want, does, it, does something like that exist to collapse all these wave functions and make a physical universe? Now, I mean, that's an interpretation. Another one is the multiple universe interpretation. Now this is, it sounds bizarre, but perhaps it makes the most sense. Um, and then goes something like this, basically. Since everything is, is given by this wave equation, instead of the wave equation collapsing at all, every possible outcome happens. And, uh, and for every possible outcome, a new universe is created. So basically when you open the box, there's one universe where you find the cat dead and one universe where you find the cat alive and both exist simultaneously. Now, it's pretty cool to think about and imagine how some quantum object, some quantum event can create huge differences in our world. And so here's a pretty interesting one. Imagine there's some huge gamma ray burst in some faraway galaxy that caused that uh, this gamma, a gamma particle, came through all the way to Earth and hit, say, Adolf Hitler's mother in the uterus and caused a miscarriage of... Adolf Hitler. Now two universes are created, one where this happened and one, one where it did not happen. And basically, uh, there's one universe where World War II did not happen and the other where it did. So I can imagine that these worlds would be quite different today in that case. So there's your multiple universe interpretation. Now there's one more interpretation that us physicists usually in practice follow, and, that's, and that's, that's due to the fact that no experiment that we know of can actually prove any interpretation. Um, every interpretation, no matter which one you believe, the experiments work out the same, so you, you can't distinguish one from the other, which one is right, which one is wrong. Maybe they're all wrong, who knows? Uh, but the last one is the shut up and calculate version <laughs> interpretation. <laughs> So that concludes my talk. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Whoa. Hubba, hubba.